point, gives to Newell. Takes the shot, the block, and then scores! For St. Cloud State hockey fans, there is not a better feeling than watching the Huskies light the lamp against their opposition. Just down Interstate 94 in Minneapolis, a Minnesota man is looking to revolutionize the game of hockey. He wants to add more scoring into hockey games, and to accomplish this, he and his company Elevate are looking to throw a curve on a hockey stick design. And it all started right here in the state of hockey. I grew up in northern Wisconsin, actually. I was born in, in Minnesota. Uh, I lived here until I was about four, and then we, uh, we moved to Wisconsin. Uh, my dad was a veterinarian and a lot of cows in Wisconsin, so uh, I grew up in a small town called Barron. Youth hockey in Wisconsin is not nearly as large as it is here in Minnesota. And for Andy, he didn't have your typical family hockey bloodlines. My dad did not play hockey growing up, but uh, for some reason, when I was four years old, he decided that uh, I should be a hockey player. So, um, 1976, I started playing uh, mite hockey in, in uh, Rice Lake, Wisconsin. Following the encouragement of his father, Andy would go on to play a lot of youth hockey. But as he grew older, playing the sport didn't seem like it would last forever. Growing up, I was not necessarily the biggest kid out on the ice, and I think once we started to uh, do some checking. I you know, was uh, finding that, or thinking maybe hockey wasn't the right game for me, so I went and tried basketball and did that in like fifth and sixth grade. And after like two years of that, A, I was not necessarily all that good at basketball either, and, but I, I missed the ice. I definitely wanted to get back out there and um, I just loved the game of hockey and, and uh, Went back to hockey in seventh grade, and you know it's uh, been something I've done ever since then. So, with the prospect of becoming a future athlete dimming away, Andy would turn his focus into preparing himself for the corporate world. Kind of growing up, I was always a, a math guy, I guess is <laughs> what you could say, and so I kind of experimented with a couple of different things, chemistry and maybe pre-med and whatnot. But uh, ended up getting a math degree and tried to figure out what I was going to do with it and along the way decided that I was going to go into business. And so I kind of uh, started focusing on business math, so finance and, and that uh, type of area. Um, so I graduated with a degree in math but with kind of the business emphasis uh, along with it. And then uh, after graduating uh, from UMD I headed off to uh, work at Northwest Airlines. So worked there as a marketing analyst. and. You know, took the business career from there. Even with a successful business career, Andy's passion for the game of hockey continued to burn within him. And with an entrepreneurial spirit that he carried with him for all his entire life, an idea sparked to bend our perception of the hockey stick. You know, the, the curved blade starts with the story of Stan Makita breaking the blade of his, his stick in the door, right? He's coming off the ice and he's frustrated and he jams the stick in the door and breaks it and he decides that he's going to take a shot with, you know, out of frustration and he notices that he's got more power. There's no you know, genesis story like that for, for Elevate, but it was you know, having played hockey my whole life, uh, I started playing around. I, you know, as a math science person, I had taken some physics classes, so I'm not an engineer, but I had at least some knowledge of physics, and I started looking at the hockey stick and there was something there that felt like there was an opportunity for improvement by creating the offset and creating leverage and torque. And so I started playing around with that, you know, years ago, but I didn't really know what to do, right? So somebody says, well, how do you make a hockey stick? I'm like, I don't know how to make a hockey stick. Andy's search for the man that would bring his idea to life takes us all the way to the great state of California. Born in Lancaster, north of here by probably about an hour, and originally that was a large uh, military uh, aircraft uh, location. McDonnell Douglas was located out there, and my dad worked out there. So, born there, and been pretty much a Southern California kid 
living from San Diego, uh, just a West Coast kid across the across California. So, despite having all of the beautiful sunshine, the beaches, and the stars of Hollywood nearby, Tim was still the typical young boy who naturally liked to break things. I destroyed almost every electrical device I could find. Why? Because I want to know how it works. So I was always a tinker. I'd tear something apart to understand. So it wouldn't be uncommon to get a great gift at Christmas. It lasts for a couple weeks and I'd tear it apart with my parents just being frustrated that I just destroyed this $100 gift. Even then, it just, it didn't matter. If it was technical, I enjoyed playing with it and being able to understand how it worked, the mechanics, the electrical component, you name it. So I was a tear apart kid. I, I put everything through its paces. Ice hockey in California was far behind the likes of football and basketball, but sometimes it just takes a small group to make a large influence. So we lived on this street and uh, there were a bunch of kids that had roller skates. And like I said, tennis shoe roller skates uh, with a stopper on the front. Uh, <laughs> just uh, uh, had no uh, perception of what really, uh, there was no such thing really as roller hockey at the time, but ice hockey was, I, mean, I knew who the kings were. Um, and that was really about it. I got it as a gift and we played in the street and you know there were a couple other kids that eventually bought sticks and we were out there giving it our best. So it was just a, it was, of all the sports that I enjoyed, hockey by far early on was the most interesting. With a spark of curiosity, or perhaps a little puck luck as they call it, Tim's entrance into the hockey world came from a business offer. Essentially, got involved in hockey through Innovative and it was a really kind of cool experience. What people didn't recognize at the time, Innovative is a brand new business. They had actually been working more in golf and we ended up getting a call. My wife and I had a small composite company and they asked, hey, can you build a rectangular shaft? And at the time I had no idea what it was. And what it turned out to be was a hockey shaft and it was really in the forefront of composite hockey shafts. So. I started in that area and was able to move and, and, and create and develop a product that we took to market with, with Innovative Hockey, which after a couple of ownership changes and, and transitions is now Warrior Hockey today. And then um, I moved from Innovative to Easton and had the opportunity to work with them with the original uh, Ultralight product, help them in manufacturing, all, all areas where the hands-on tinkering, being able to uh, work through manufacturing capabilities and issues was part of the job. Having worked with NHL players like Paul Correa and Joe Sackick, Tim's experience in working with hockey sticks made him one of the most sought after people in the industry. So just how did Andy Ullman find this guy? Honestly, it was a LinkedIn search. Did a LinkedIn search, came across this guy named Tim Pearson, who uh, looked to have a pretty interesting background and experience. So I sent him a message and he replied and said, yeah, I'd be interested in talking with you. Um, and, and so that's kind of, you know, how all of it got started. After reaching out to Tim, Andy waited for his response, a response he would not have to wait long to receive. Tim and Andy set up a meeting to discuss Andy's proposal. It was interesting. I had that first call and I learned that he was very, very passionate about what he was doing and that the technology might have some merit. So we went through the first kind of fact-finding mission, told him a little bit about the industry and really tried to encourage him that if he, he did not have the tenacity to move forward with the technology, like, like this was not something that was gonna develop in a year. It might not even be two years. And here we are today at three years in with the final launch. We took the time necessary to develop, but I recognized that he had that tenacity to keep moving forward and, and had the commitment to do the right development. A lot of the industry will go for a six month or a one year or even an 18 month development cycle. And if it doesn't look like it's 100% on track, it, they dump it and it's out. And so that was exciting to me. This was a guy that was willing to do heavy testing on ice at multiple iterations of the design, validate that the product actually had an enhancement that worked and, and then fine tune it in each iteration. I remember him walking through and saying that he was gonna look at three different things. And he said, I wanna you know, understand what the playability improvement is. I want to understand if there's any manufacturing challenges to what we're thinking of and was there going to be a durability problem. And at the end of that, I remember him kind of going through, I don't see, you know, he goes, I can understand the playability improvement. I don't think there's going to be any manufacturing challenges and I don't see any durability issue here. He goes, I think you've got a game changer. And I mean, I think it was, 
he was on, you know, he was committed and, and uh, you know, invested right away. After that first meeting, it seemed as though the dream of building a brand new hockey stick absorbed its first body check on the way to reality. It may have been the first step to a long road, but it felt like winning the Stanley Cup to Andy. I always felt like there was something there, but to hear that coming from his, you know, from his mouth, I mean, it, that, that, was, that, that was one of the most exciting moments, you know, early on that I had, which was like, wow. I mean, to, to hear that from him, it wasn't like, oh, this is interesting. Sure, I'll, I'll be invested. It, it was a very, you know, committed response. He wasn't non-committal at all. And I, I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, a more favorable response from him in that first conversation. So where did this idea actually come from? Why bend the hockey stick? Andy explains it was mostly about science. Very, very early on, what one of the things that I remember um, thinking about was sort of the angle of attack, if you will, that when a hockey stick is starting the, the shot, that the stick is pressing into the ice as opposed to in the direction of the shot. Right? And obviously part of that is the loading process. And so I had a, an old, uh, old floor hockey stick and I had shoved a metal rod down the middle of that and I could bend it and it would hold its shape. And what I was looking at was by bending it and sort of changing where the top hand was relative to the bottom hand, I could increase that angle of attack and make it more in the direction of the shot. And I was thinking that it would transfer more power. And I think, you know, there may be still some truth to that, but I think what I had kind of come across at that point was the offset and really the crank that, that's created by doing that. And by putting the top and bottom hands in, in different planes or different lines, there was a lot of power that was you could generate because of that offset. So leverage and torque were you know, kind of brought into the, the uh, into the equation that weren't there with a single, what we call a single axis stick or a straight shaft. Because there, the only way to, to rotate the, the blade is with, with your wrist. Whereas by creating the offset, we were introducing uh, just the fact that you could, could create uh, some, some torque on the blade without wrist turns, but then you were incorporating larger muscles of the body into that action as well. The trademark offset was the key to the stick's ability to create more power. The team at Elevate Hockey went through many design changes, focusing on a couple of key points, one being stick stability. If you think about a player's operating range, where their lower hand is on the stick as they're using it, it's typically somewhere between 24 and 36 inches. And so where that invisible line crosses the stick is the most stable point on the stick. That and anything above it. And so what we did was we ended up trying to figure out how do we move that so we can get the, that within the player's operating range. And so we ended up doing some, you know, lots of different design variations around that. And basically what we ended up doing was just taking the offset, which in the first two versions, was about 18 inches long and we stretched that out so it was 36 inches long. So now along a 60 inch shaft we were uh, causing that lateral offset to occur over 36 inches and that really led us to our the, the current version of the the XL27. With the design of the stick now set after multiple iterations it was now time to put the stick into the hands of the players to test it out. We had a very small group, six other players, highly skilled players, um, and had them test it out. And I remember, you know, kind of watching their reactions when they saw it. You know, it was just, you, you could just see people kind of looking at it with, you know, a, a pretty significant sense of doubt, like, is that gonna work? Um, but I remember guys getting out on the ice, starting to, you know, kind of watch them sort of respond to, Maybe this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And then 
you know, starting to take some shots. And, and we had one particular person, Josh Levine, who uh, he's a, a hockey trainer. And, and so he coaches a lot of players. And I remember him being really cerebral about, you know, the using the stick. And we were probably 15, 20 minutes into the session. I was talking to him about what he was, you know, noticing. And he said, when I first started to use this, I had no idea where the shots were going. And he goes, I just kind of backed off and, you know, started, built my shot back up from the ground up. And he goes, I could start to feel the stick doing work for me. And, and that was a really interesting concept that I still talk about today, even with our, you know, newer versions, um, is people have to, you know, it's, it's very similar to when players would go from a straight blade to a curved blade 50 years ago that it was a much different shooting uh, technique. And we, you know, we, we typically don't think that it takes people that long to adjust, maybe 60 to 90 minutes, but it's definitely not immediate, right? There's, there's some investment that players need to make to get familiar and comfortable with that stick. The purpose of the offset design puts the top hand forward and the bottom hand backwards about three inches. The idea is to create a crank in the shooting motion to generate more power. The stick actually puts the shooter's hands in the correct shooting position just due to its design. My focus has been really the putting on a, a coach's outfit and getting out on ice and witnessing exactly what's happening and trying to monitor exactly what's happening. So in the testing validation of it, yeah, you, they all show up, you watch them tape it up, and I ran the very first uh, test sessions to kind of show the, the protocol that I had experienced in the past for validation. And so you, you hold your breath as the first sticks get tested and you start monitoring where the improvements are. And then it turns into more of this, just it's a, a technical evaluation of what's happening. Are your shoot, what types of shots occurring are, are shooting similar to what you're familiar with, you know, rating on a scale of one to 10, and then be able to come back and dial it in. And that's what we did, but we did it on a very massive scale for each type of shooting uh, technique, all the different types of players, and just kept building that data. But it was nerve wracking initially on the ice, and then it went to, wow, we, we do have something. What, what we believe from our physics results and from our, our calculations is really transpiring to a better product. And that's what this kind of turned into. And then, and then it kept turning into refine, improve, refine, and improve till we feel it's at the stage that the market should see it. With testing now complete, Elevate has launched their stick into the retail market. And for Andy, the success he's enjoyed is still a bit surreal. Certainly as a four-year-old kid starting out playing hockey with a straight blade, <laughs> I remember that. Um, you know, to look back on that and think that, you know, 40 years later, this is where I'd be, I could never have imagined that, so. We worked hard to get to where we're at today and we're gonna continue working hard to keep moving forward. We know this is a game with big players out there, and I mean big players, the, the Bowers and the CCMs out there. There's a ton of heritage, experience, networks, relationships, and we recognize that we're gonna be up against some difficult territory to, make, to break into those environments, but we're confident the product's right, and as long as you're confident the product's right, you can deliver on that each and every time, you start building these relationships and you find these these organizations, and I, I mean by organizations, these dealers that support what you, where you're going, the players that, from a grassroots standpoint, are willing to back you, you just slowly take the time to embed where you need to to keep growing the product. Again, it's patience. We waited three years to launch our product. Will it take three years for full saturation in the market? I, I don't think it's gonna take that long, but we're patient. We'll keep moving forward. After changing the hockey stick, for Tim and Andy, their success they have enjoyed from this experience is something they would never trade away. Their footprint they would like to leave on the game of hockey, though, is still a work in progress. I certainly look at something, you know, what is next? What else can we do, right? So to me, it's more about what do we do, with, you know, with the success that would come from this and how do we give that back to the game? And we haven't done it yet, right? So I'd say the legacy part isn't there yet. And I don't know exactly what that's gonna be, you know, is that, you know, finding a way to, you know, create programs to help more kids get involved in hockey and grow the game and the sport, that changing the stick certainly is, I mean, it's a fantastic outcome and it's great for me, it's great for our team, but I think as far as the game goes, 
that's work that we have, you know, that we still have to do. Elevate says its stick has been approved for play by the National Hockey League, Hockey Canada, the NCAA, and USA Hockey. Their approval for international play by the IIHF is still pending. For Tim and Andy, by curbing the hockey stick, they hope to break the image of what the hockey stick can't do. For us back here in St. Cloud, it's possible this stick could be in the hands of your favorite hockey player very soon. And that means more goal celebrations at the Herb Brooks National Hockey Center. And that's exactly what Elevate Hockey has set out to do. Reporting for Husky Mag, I'm Nick Maxson.